All right, guys, so in this video, I am going to be discussing the Titanic's design and what caused the ship to sink. You know, you would figure if you have watertight doors, you close all the doors, that shuts off all the water from leaking into other areas of the ship. Unfortunately, while Titanic did have watertight doors, they did not have watertight rooms. And we're going to be discussing how the height of the bulkheads towards the bow of the ship contributed to the sinking of Titanic and also the change that the Britannic had to make to be deemed more safe. Now, before I even get into the design of Titanic with the watertight doors and the different compartments, it is important to reference Titanic extremely safe for the early 1900s. Now, obviously, it is kind of ridiculous to say that considering the ship was in service for five days, but this ship was very safe for its time fixed with different watertight doors to seal off flooding. And it was known at the time as kind of an unsinkable ship. I do think in the 97 movie, they kind of jazzed that up and overhyped the idea that it was actually unsinkable, but it did have some compartments that were very modern at the time that made the ship extremely hard to sink. Now, just like it's mentioned in the movie, Titanic could stay afloat with four compartments breached, unfortunately, not five, and we're going to discuss why that is the case. The lower section of Titanic was divided into 16 major watertight compartments that could easily be sealed off if part of the hull was punctured and leaking water. After the collision with the iceberg, the hull portion of six of the 16 compartments were damaged. Sealing off the compartment was completed immediately after the damage was realized, but as the bow of the ship began to pitch forward from the weight of the water in that area of the ship, the water in some of the compartments began to spill over into adjacent compartments. Although the compartments were called watertight, they were actually only watertight horizontally. Their tops were open and the walls extended only a few feet above the waterline, if the transverse bulkheads, which were the walls of the watertight compartments that are positioned across the width of the ship, had been a few feet taller, the water would have been better contained within the damaged compartments. The sinking then, in theory, would have been slowed, possibly allowing enough time for nearby ships to help. However, because of the extensive flooding in the bow compartments and the subsequent flooding of the entire ship, the Titanic was gradually the Titanic was gradually pulled below the waterline. And we do have a little bit of a diagram here that I created. So basically what we're looking at is all of the areas, the X's are the areas that were punctured by the iceberg. And honestly, unfortunately the Titanic was screwed. The second all of these compartments were punctured, allowing seawater to pour in five different compartments. Now this is where it gets a little bit confusing. If you have watertight doors, even with those five compartments, just seal it off. Just seal it off. Well, guys, think about it. They had watertight doors. They did not have watertight rooms. And unfortunately, because the bulkheads didn't go high enough up, and there's an explanation for why they didn't, the explanation is it would cramp the upper areas of the ship if they extended the bulkheads higher. There's a good example of this. If you look at the Britannic swimming pool, the hollowed out version of the Britannic when it's a hospital ship, you can see the bulkheads going up and it really does kind of look weird. It's like an extra extended wall. That's what Titanic needed. They didn't have that. And that caused, as the ship became more waterlogged, obviously all the areas that are punctured and open to the ocean are going to fill up immediately, but that water cannot be contained because the bulkheads are not high enough. So the ship is going to get pulled down by the weight of the water as the front of the hull gets more and more waterlogged. And you can see those little arrows going from boiler room six to boiler room five. It's going to spill over. That's what Andrews was explaining in the 97 movie. As the ship gets pulled down, the bulkheads are not high enough to stop it. So the water will spill over to the next compartment and the next compartment and the next compartment. And it's just like something happening exponentially. It's only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse as more water pours into the Titanic. You cannot stop it. It is impossible at that point to stop the flooding. That's the whole idea. The height of the bulkheads 
really dooming the Titanic, and they did make changes to this in the Britannic. Of course, the Britannic did end up sinking in nine months, although that was due to it serving during a war and unfortunately hitting a German mine. Now, guys, that is kind of the breakdown of the Titanic. It was doomed from the beginning because of the height of the bulkheads and because that the iceberg, it's almost like it skidded along the side of the front of the hull of the ship to where it punctured different areas and different compartments and allowed ocean water to continuously pour in boiler room six and then the front areas which really waterlogged the front of the ship and the bulkheads were not high enough to contain it and stop it from flowing over on to boiler room five, to boiler room four, to the upper areas of the ship and the flooding just gets exponentially worse and then the pumps really were not designed to deal with catastrophic flooding which is what Titanic was experiencing. The pumps were more designed to move water throughout the ship rather than dealing with a crazy amount of water entering it. And now the White Star Line, they did not change any of their watertight compartments. What they did do is with the ends of the transverse bulkheads of the watertight compartment, by raising the ends of the transverse bulkheads, if a ship were taking in water through the bow compartments and the ship began to pitch forward, exactly what happened with the Titanic, then the water in the compartments could not flow over top of the bulkheads into the next compartments. As a result, flooding of the damaged compartments could be controlled and isolated to only the damaged sections. So it was the height of the bulkheads that didn't allow the Titanic to have watertight rooms. The issue that I think a lot of people have, when they think of watertight doors, they think that entire room is sealed shut when unfortunately that is not the case, the water could go through vents or it could go over top if you do not have high enough bulkheads. But even at the time, the Titanic was seen very safe. That's why it was considered unsinkable. And it was an absolutely one in a million freak accident that doomed the Titanic. It was a safe ship. Even though it only survived five days back in those times, it was very, very safe. But either way, guys, that's kind of a breakdown on how the height of the bulkheads... And listen, it's understandable. You're trying to build the most grandiose ship in the world. You've already got the Olympic. You're trying to make the Titanic better. You don't want a cramped interior. If you raised the bulkheads, that could have impacted how grandiose and how luxurious the Titanic was. It would have very likely impacted the main dining halls and a lot of the open interior spaces if they would have raised the bulkhead. It would have been interesting to see how Titanic would have been able to manage with the five compartments flooded but contained from further flooding if they would have had the extended higher bulkheads Unfortunately, the watertight compartments were supposed to work by staying above the waterline, which would prevent overspilling. Once they go under, that completely compromised the ship because it just got exponentially worse. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.